Hi everyone, this is Sarfraz from Aristotle Prep and we are looking at uh, passage 26 from the OG 13 RC chapter. This has questions 134 to 139. As always, we will first read the entire passage in detail. We will try to understand everything the way I would have understood it had I been attending the passage. We will then come up with a purpose for the passage and we will then approach the question. So the first sentence is always very important. It says, in the two decades between 1910 and 1930, more than 10% of the black population of the US left the South, where the preponderance of the black population had been located and migrated to Northern states, with the largest number moving, it is claimed, between 1916 and 1918. So the first sentence tells me, in those two decades, uh, more than 10% of blacks moved from southern to northern states in the US. Okay. Second sentence says, it has been frequently assumed. The moment I read that much, and the moment you read such sentences in any passage, it is assumed or it was assumed, it means what was assumed will definitely not be the case. You will get this with practice, but the moment I read, it has been frequently assumed, it means whatever has been frequently assumed eventually would not have been the case. Anyway, let's read on and see if I'm right. It has been frequently assumed but not proved that the majority of the migrants in what has come to be called the Great Migration, so that migration in those two decades is called the Great Migration, so a majority of the migrants in the Great Migration came from rural areas and were motivated by two concurrent factors. Hmm, okay. The collapse of the cotton industry following the ball weevil infestation which began in 1898. Okay, that's one reason for the movement, collapse of cotton industry. And uh, increased demand in the north for labor following the secession of European immigration caused by the outbreak of the First World War, whatever. All I understood is the two reasons are, one is the collapse of the cotton industry in the south. The second is increased demand for workers in the north. That's it. Uh, that was those were the assumptions by the way which most likely are not going to be true this assumption has led to the conclusion that the migrants subsequent lack of economic mobility so now we also know that subsequently uh, these migrants these blacks uh, were not doing well economically uh, their lack of economic mobility in the north is tied to rural background a background that implies unfamiliarity with urban living and a lack of industrial skill hmm. now i understood it so you see, the first paragraph says that there was a huge great migration happening between 1910 and 1930. Uh, happened from uh, southern states to northern states. And uh, it's been assumed that it happened for two reasons. The ball infestation of cotton industry and uh, uh, increased demand for labor in the north. Uh, and from this, uh, from this, people have concluded that uh, the reason uh, these migrants in the north, when they came to the north, uh, they did not do very well economically is because of their rural background. That's basically the first paragraph. I'm guessing the rest of the passage will try to refute this, uh, given the assumption part. So, and you see the first sentence or the first word of the next paragraph is but, which means the contrast is coming in. But the question of who actually left the South has never been rigorously investigated. So these guys are con concluding that who left the South were the rural people. But that question now we are told has never been rigorously investigated. Was it actually the rural people who left? Okay. Although numerous investigations document an exodus from rural southern areas to southern cities prior to the Great Migration. Understand this. So before the Great Migration happened, there was a movement in the south happening from southern rural areas to southern cities. Okay, understood. There is no north in the picture right now. This is before the Great Migration. Okay. Uh, although numerous investigations document an exodus from rural southern areas to southern cities, no one has considered whether the same migrants then moved on to northern cities. Great. So, while there is no doubt that there was movement from rural areas of the, of the south to cities of the south, but we still don't know whether the people or the migrants who then moved to the north were the same rural people. What if they were people from the cities? We don't know that is what it's saying. Okay. In 1910, more than 600,000 black workers or 10% of the black workforce reported themselves to be engaged in manufacturing and mechanical pursuits 
the federal census category roughly encompassing the entire industrial sector okay the great migration could easily have been made up entirely of this group and their families okay okay interesting so what it is saying now i have also understood the dispute in the passage the dispute is who moves from the south to the north it is not being disputed that movement did happen but is it the rural workers who are moving from the south to the north or is it the industrial workers the assumption is it is the rural workers now the author is trying to refute that by saying it could also be the industrial workers hmm last sentence of the second paragraph says it is perhaps surprising to argue that an employed population could be enticed to move but an explanation lies in the labor conditions then prevalent in the south interesting the last sentence the author is addressing an objection that people may have so the author is saying it's possible that the industrial workers move from the south to the north then he says people may question why will somebody who already has good employment in the industrial sector in the south why will he move to the north and he's saying there is an explanation to that which lies in the labor conditions in the south what were the conditions hopefully he will tell us now so you see it was very very important to understand second paragraph the way i did by stopping and thinking now i'm very very clear on what the passage is concerned about it's concerned about who has moved from the south to the north the assumption is it's a rural worker but the author is trying to refute that now okay third paragraph which is the last paragraph about 35% of the urban black population in the south was engaged in skill trades some were from the old artisan class of slavery uh, okay which had had a monopoly of certain trades but they were gradually being pushed out by competition mechanization and obsolescence so you see it's following from the last sentence of the second uh, paragraph which says it's trying to give an explanation for the movement of industrial workers to the north by talking about labor conditions in the south the first part says there was too much competition for these guys okay um the remaining 65% more recently urbanized worked in newly developed industries tobacco lumber this 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 okay wages in the south however were low and black workers were aware through labor recruiters and the black press that they could earn even more or they could earn more even as unskilled workers in the north then they could as artisans in the south so you see another reason now first reason was competition because of which the industrial workers may have moved from south to the north now the second reason comes the pay was much better in the north so even if they worked as unskilled workers in the north they would make more money than they were in the south working as skilled workers okay after the ball we were in frustration urban black workers faced competition from the continuing influx of both black and white rural workers who were driven to undercut the wages formerly paid for industrial jobs interesting you see it says when this ball we were infestation happened uh, the urban black workers where are they they are in the south the whole thing is about the south the urban black workers basically the industrial workers in the south faced competition from the guys who moved from the rural areas so again another reason to uh, move away from the southern areas thus a move north would be seen as advantageous to a group that was already urbanized and steadily employed and the easy conclusion tying their subsequent economic problems in the north to their rural background comes into question interesting finally the summary comes so in the third paragraph the author is giving three or four reasons why it may have made sense for the urban or the industrial black workers to move from the south to the north so then he concludes in the last paragraph the last sentence that if this is actually if this could be the case then you can't simply conclude that what we have concluded at the end of the first paragraph that the reason for economic problems of these workers was the rural background because they may not actually have been rural workers so if you look at the entire passage the first paragraph talks about some great migration and it goes on to give you two reasons uh, for the migration and finally very very important is it concludes that the people who migrated they were doing economically quite badly in the north and the reason for that is the rural background the passage is basically concerned with whether they actually came from a rural background or not second paragraph tells tells you that uh, it's never been studied whether they actually came from a rural background third paragraph gives you some reasons why actually the industrial workers from the south may have wanted to shift to the north that's the entire passage for you it is definitely not a neutral passage the author definitely has an agenda the agenda is to counter the assumption stated at the end of the first paragraph
So we've understood the passage pretty well, uh, and the way we've understood it, I don't think we should face any problems in answering any question. Most of them, I think, we will be able to answer or predict the answer correctly. Um, so okay, let's proceed with the question. The first one is 134, which says the author indicates explicitly, which means it has to be written in the passage, that which of the following records has been a source of information in her investigation. Surprisingly, I don't remember this. So I'll read the option and maybe go back and check. U.S. Immigration Service reports from this to this. Payrolls of southern manufacturing firms is definitely not there. The volume of cotton exports is definitely not there. The federal census, I don't remember. Advertisements of labor recruiters is not... Is it there? Advertisements of labor recruiters hold this. So, I have eliminated B and C. A, D and E, I am not sure. I have to go back and check. So, A... U.S. Immigration Service. I'm looking at the passage and I've seen the entire passage and I don't see Immigration Service report anywhere. So it goes out. Um, now I'm looking for the federal census uh, in the passage. Um, yeah, I see it now in line number 30. The federal census category roughly encompassing the entire industrial sector. So then D definitely is the answer. I should look at E. Advertisements of labor recruiters because I read that in the last... Um, Paragraph line number 46, I think. Wages in the South were low and black workers were aware through labor recruiters and the black press that they could earn even more. But the advertisement of labor recruiters uh, appearing in newspapers is nowhere in um, the passage. So D would definitely be the answer in that case. 